something of you are having as a challenge or is it just like you have overcome it okay uh, i still don't have uh, full understand of uh, what unfulfilled should mean here i mean we have uh, 97 percent of orders accepted but uh, at the same time uh, we have this high rate of rejection uh, i don't know how the yeah, app so that's that's unfulfilled it. right so unfulfilled means it is an accept it's not about acceptance but it's delivery so if in the middle for example drivers sometimes just accept but then they reject or users might order but cancel so all of that are unfulfilled because unfulfilled is for the company that they are not earning so if they if they were to not earn then anything for them is unfulfilled Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Uh, okay. I I have another question about the the process of the app. Uh, is it shows the order uh, for the driver one by one? So if this one rejected, then we'll show it to another one, or show the order at the same time for many drivers, and one of them can accept the order. I I am not hundred percent sure. I think in the past, the, the company used to help us to answer this type of questions. But I think we've, we can fairly assume it will be sent to many. And when one is accepting, of course, then it's locked. That means no one can accept. But when the, the person now is rejecting, then they would basically um, start finding another one if it's about the driver. But this is just an assumption you can assume. OK, thank you. Yeah, great. All right, so let's progress. Yes, Wandera. Uh, good morning. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, a question eh, about uh, the, the, I wanted to ask um, uh, how does uh, the use of uh, Casual inference uh, helped uh, the business side of the like of, of the project, like like the solution. Like, how does it benefit the business? That's uh, the question I wanted to ask. Like the solution we're supposed to okay, create that's for a, the business. Like, how that's did it that's the good the question, market? but just let's let's ask. Let me ask you back. Let me ask you back one thing. So, how much is currently have understood about the causal inference? So what does it do? Okay. So it, it, your current uh, understanding it doesn't oh, oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Based on the on, on, on what I've, uh, I've seen, it, it's used in like uh, testing, testing to understand why. Uh, let, let me say why. Uh, okay, like if I give like an example, like in a like in a clinical trial like if they want to like test a drug and they want to know like why um uh, why a certain group of people like use the drug and they got well and why others who necessarily didn't use the drug still got well so it's more of like testing why two different like variables uh okay like understanding why two different two two different things happen okay it's more like answering questions like certain questions that let me say if i want to answer okay like in this in this example i think the company would want to know why why the, the drivers consistently like why do some drivers reject like the requests so the way we the, the way we could uh, we could do that it would be like try out tests and not know why like it happens i don't know if i've explained it well, well enough but that's yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you are, you are answering your own question, right? That yeah. you are answering your own question. Now, have you not answered your own question? So it is exactly that, right? In some way, yeah, you are right. Yes. There is, it, it helps you two things. One is, of course, to get understanding why something happens. 
and that's usually important right for example yes the company gokada might want to know why first why are people you know why are drivers not completing before just answering and second part is okay it also helps them to do intervention to design intervention just like the medical case you said okay like what about if we do this like for example if we now make it easy to consume or instead of a tablet what about if we make it um like a lotion right something like that so it it gives them some form of also experimentation ability so yeah exactly what you said okay okay Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I can I sort of ask another question? Yeah. Uh, like when it comes to like the rejects, uh, what certainty do you have? Okay. My assumption is that, mm -hmm. in my understanding, the rejects are all by the when you use on council. That means you have to send the request again, because you can send the request and you keep getting the same driver every single time. So if, if he's in that you're the same demography, geographic demography as yourself. So here in, in, in this in this sense, is it the uh, because if you look at like uh, some of the what the longitude and latitude, you realize that some of the drivers are actually really close to the to the, the the like the user, but they still reject. And then sometimes like the one who accepts kind of like further. So is it uh, the because like when you say unfulfilled might be cancelled or rejected so like is it like uh, in this current scenario is it are, are we supposed to focus on the driver who is it the driver who rejects or it's both so we, we can't really know who actually rejected the, 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 the driver or the customer i think i think that's this is a very good question you, this is a good question i think you should consider also why the close buys are not accepting is this because you know what are is this because the order is far you know you, you have to figure out you know the destination knowing the destination you have to you can compute that so yes unfulfilled means in in this case you can include also why are not the drivers that are closed are not you know taking the order or accepting so that's a very good point. Yeah. Okay, so we had Getacho before or yeah, I was up. And me. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh I was uh, raising my hand to just uh, uh, uh talk on the question about uh, question about my, mr martin was uh, raising mm -hmm. i uh, i was trying to use an example uh, the, uh, you already uh, replied the question so there is a case uh, there are lots of drivers in some location and there is a, a broadcast message for them to deliver that uh, item but uh, most of them, or maybe all of them, uh, did not accept it. So the one who asked for the delivery may uh, take time to uh, get his item. So uh, the, the use of uh, casual inference in this case is to understand how, why, what is, uh, why is uh, taking time to uh, deliver his item. We can say lots of hypotheses. So maybe it's because. Uh, uh, far from their locations, maybe some uh, other parameters are uh, listed. So the main objective of this causal inference is to uh, identify what was the reason behind not uh, delivering the item on time or uh, something like that. In my understanding, we are going to yeah. find what was the cause for this. Yeah, it is what is the cause you are trying to, but every whenever you say what is the cause you have to do some kind of maybe parameterization right maybe now 
like your hypothesis, if it's talking about distance, then you have to compute as a variable distance, right? So distance yeah. to destination. If it's security, then you have to compute security by, you know, uh, zip code or by, you know, by region. So by looking at the Nigerian, like the Lagos region and dividing it into regions and estimating, for example, security index from enriching it, you know, whatever you get um, in that area or traffic in that area is maybe in the destination is higher, right? So things like that. And then after that, of course, you do you do that and you model why could be, you know, what are the parameters that are affecting that variable? In this case, the target variable would be, you know, you are not like increasing, you know, or decreasing or increasing the number of acceptance in close by, you know, by close by um, drivers. And once you do that, okay, then you say like, if I decrease, for example, the distance, you know, how much does it affect uh, people would, would they accept? So, so this would be hypothetical tests, right? Once, once you model the cause and effect relationship, then, okay, now if you know that distance affects, then if you decrease the distance, then you, you start seeing most people start accepting. So, but yeah, exactly. So it, it gives you, the formalism gives you, one is to identify factors that are important, and the other one is to help you experiment. Okay. Yeah, great. Michael? Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my question is like about um, continuous on the Martin's question. So the drivers, we, we are we are assuming that the drivers are not accepting, yeah? So what if the system mm -hmm. rejects them and there are a lot of a lot of drivers in in one area, then the the one the one the one driver gets the job or the task, then the others all the system rejects them. Well, why don't we assume like that? You mean the system exactly system failure, right? So the the app is not accepting. Not the system failure, like for example, in the data set for the three nine two zero zero one, the yeah. the 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 two four three eight two eight that driver id accepted the job and finished so all the other nine drivers get rejected so well there, there are two scenarios right for one scenario is all the drivers rejected the task because it will be as you said it it may be far away it, it may be traffic issue or the road is not good something like that we can yeah. assume like that or the other thing we can assume is uh, for example, in Addis Ababa around Piazza, there are a lot of ride drivers gathered in their place. So when when some user or customer calls the the ride or the Uber, uh, because there there are a lot of cars, only one of them got the job right. So the, mm -hmm. the system kills for all the other drivers rejected. So can we assume like that as well? No, but I mean in a way like it is true, but you can say in that area you know how many orders are there so is uh, are people are drivers around that area because there are many many orders from that area in that case yes then how often they get those drivers in that location i think if it was giving only one person you would assume but in time if they all get i think it's a known thing right like the first person it's first come first serve maybe model where the first person walks it but it, because it's only one order one driver so we cannot assume that they got rejected in a way it, it is it, it is impossible that all are accepted for one order but you can assume how often they get rejected as a as a factor that is like maybe a discouraging factor for them to accept so maybe they are doing some other job, right? In that case, if if you reject them a lot, but but not, but you know you cannot consider failure the one thing that cannot happen in reality. That means in reality, one order can only be completed by one driver, so it, it doesn't matter. 
So, uh, okay, but my understanding was the, the question is like to optimize the drivers for the company, right? Yeah. So, so why don't we assume that there are many drivers in one areas because in some of the data, there are 50 drivers rejected one, one task from the customer. So, uh, why, why don't you assume like that? Because if there are 50 drivers and if 50 drivers rejected the the place, the maybe order. the, yeah, the order, sorry, the, rejected the order, maybe the order's place is very far or yeah, yeah, like as you said, yeah, so. Yeah, but why, that, why that, that's, that's like we are considering that. We are considering that. I mean, I, I didn't understand your point. So of course, if they reject each of it, then it is a, a big factor. The number of people who reject will tell you about the order the more they reject it the more it tells you about something why you know why that order for example from another region as well close by if people also reject it maybe it's not distance maybe it's security so or maybe traffic so i don't maybe i, I don't i didn't get your point so we are assuming that so the rejection we would consider them as important factor to understand okay so so we are we are assuming that uh, the, for example let's say the 50 rejections part alone so the, there is some user so if he if he orders then 50 drivers rejected him then like the 51 driver accepted it so are we considering like that um if it is a reject by 50, like, so there are two things I think earlier um, uh, Abdurrahman was asking as well. You know, what is the model that we should use? Is it like one by one? Or, but you can learn about this by time, by looking at the distribution of time that it was distributed. It's if it's broadcasted and most rejected in a very, 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 you know, sequence of time you'd imagine this is just gone to everyone, it's a broadcast. But for example, if one reject is later than the other reject and later than if it's time ordered, then you would say like, okay, you know, th this is maybe just one by one. That's in that case, it's a really, uh, it's a big problem, right? So you can look from the time distribution. But we don't have time distribution in that data. That's why there is- um, Like, I mean, you have the created ads, right? So. You have you have a timestamp in the rejected and accepted you don't have time yeah the, yeah uh, and I, I remember it is not is... all of them are not okay but you know when it was completed and when it was ordered at least yeah we know when it is ordered from the all accepted data set but we yeah don't know so when it's ordered it's also completed do you have updated so there is an updated time so maybe what i considered was from the from the accepted i take that id the, yeah. the order id then I, I look it them. in the other yeah. data set and then the distance you can. So, yeah and the distance yeah. and yeah let's do the long tip so by comparing them yeah. maybe the all all the drivers yeah, can, are in one mistake, yeah. Yeah. yeah but in principle i think the the it's a like that's why the assumption you can assume it's broadcaster so that means the rejection time is very close by like that means they are random um and the, when the person accepts it then maybe you know maybe what they do normally these things are like there are two things they probably would assume one is that they would send it for maybe 10 first when 10 rejects then they give it to another 10 instead of sending it to 50 they probably will do will i mean will do by radius so that means the first close by and then you know the first one kilometer maybe the first five kilometer and then the first 10 kilometer so they probably would do in rings by expanding so that's the usually that's what they do others thank you Good, Mister. Hello, good morning. Morning. 
So uh, my question is on the extra parameter that we are supposed to include in the data set. Uh, so I was thinking that um, maybe data about uh, whether it's a rainy day or not will be very important for our analysis, but I can't seem to find any free source that I can find the, uh, the weather status of the day. So uh, if anyone has found a way to do this, uh, I would like to ask. So, I, I, I didn't I didn't hear what what is. Uh, so for adding extra parameter on our data set, yeah, I think uh, it will be very relevant to add information whether the day was rainy or not. Uh, but I can't seem to yeah. find any free um, data, yeah. re, uh, any data source for that. So if anybody has found or has found a way to determine this, uh, I'd yeah. like to, to share. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think there are APIs. So if anyone hasn't found already to share, then the tutors will help as well. So, but yeah, if anyone like is using some APIs that can give just a um, estimate of like longitude and latitude and you get some um, rain, even if it's not by longitude, by region at least, that would that would help by region and time, let's say by that by day and region that already would help. So. Yeah. Okay. So the tutors just take take that in mind as well, and just. Hello. Can you hear me? Adisu. Yes. Yes. We can. Yeah, yes. Yes. Now I can hear. You. Okay. Uh, my question was uh, on fulfilled and unfulfilled. Uh, there is accepted one so uh, we cannot say uh, fulfilled or unfulfilled by looking at only accepted it doesn't mean yes. like that uh, so you mean so mm. if it is completed um i think mm. I, I i mean i'm i'm forgetting this if it is completed i think the only unfulfilled one would be if the accept was at a, at a distance at a higher distance um, but that is that is in that sense, like I think earlier, as I said, when the target variable defines what is filled, fulfilled and unfulfilled for the company, it is still fulfilled. That means the user waited and the driver came and delivered. So that in that case is fulfilled. But it is an interesting other variable would be like, you know, what causes if it's like above a certain, uh, if the driver was above a certain, you know, uh, uh, after a uh, above a certain threshold distance threshold you could say like for that parameter the target variable would be you know the fulfilled is the one who accepted within a certain uh, region or a certain distance and unfulfilled means with above uh, outside that that zone so like for example in one kilometer five kilometer so you can define okay if the accept was in one one kilometer you say that's fulfilled. So that means now your new target variable is transformed by saying anything outside a one kilometer is unfulfilled, even if it was fulfilled or unfulfilled. And and then you then you you define another one within a five kilometer radius. So let's imagine you have two data sets that that are like defines your full new new transform and fulfilled and unfulfilled yeah. so we are saying fulfilled and, and unfulfilled by accepting the request not the parcel delivery so in this case uh, in this case within the zone so it's not just only accept, yeah, accepting within a zone within okay. a certain radius yeah so this will give you a certain idea to study so this part will not for the you know it's it's not for the company's main question but it's for let's i mean it, it, it gives them another hint like why like because because unfulfillment correlates you can demonstrate this unfulfilled ones correlate based on the distance that the driver is coming from 
So because of that, this other way of exploring will help the company understand because if they improve this, they improve that as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, great. So now I have to leave, but I think this is, this seems like the questions are really great from every every question, and I'm very happy. Some of the people that are normally I haven't seen speaking that are speaking, and there are others. You, um, Joseph, I'm not sure if I've heard you before. Uh, Neamusi as well. I don't know if I heard you. Gilbert, I haven't heard you ever in my when I come here. So the rest at least you are improving so keep doing that um and the others who are not speaking please speak and the same was also um i think there are a few people that 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 are not here today but i haven't heard um at least ever in my when i come to the stand-ups so keep up the good work but the questions are great keep asking and i'm going to drop off but the tutors will take over and start as, as asking questions. And if there are any questions that are really um, relevant, we will also be able to ask Gokada themselves to answer. So just maybe you can send us if some some of the things uh, are key, then we will will get we will contact the company to to get to give us an idea. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, I will just drop it. Um, Rahmet or um, Mtinan or anyone who is there, Margaret, um, please take over. Sure. All right. Yeah. Great. Thanks, guys. So yeah, we can continue if uh, there are more questions or like more things that you want to share. Uh, please, the again. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, I was. I wanted. I want you. I wanted to. I wanted more clarification on the future injury part. Like, uh, are we? Like we, we, Mr. Said, are we using another data? And uh, how, are we, how are we using it? How are we making it in use in this project? And I want more clarification on the future extraction and scaling part of the squad. Um, I didn't hear the question clearly. Um, the voice was breaking. Can can maybe someone repeat it if someone heard it? Uh, can you, can you repeat? Yeah. Yes, yes, it's better now. Can you can you repeat your question? Sorry. Yeah, I want more uh, explanation on the future extraction part. Like, are we extracting another data? like uh, in the public domain rain or no rain like holidays and stuff and how are we integrating this in our in the data how are we making a metric or something like that okay sense. All right. So yeah so the goal of feature engineering you, you are trying to enrich your data. So uh what is so you you already have you're adding data to your like um the data you already have you can add data to it so what you're talking about uh things like um um just uh for example simple things you can you can look you can, like, can look up because this is in nigeria in in, uh, in lagos you can uh, just this is available data you can just pick it up easily is to like to know which like um um of course we can start by like uh, attaching like a uh, day, uh, um, day of the week to to the times so you have the time so you can basically decide which one is a day of the week or it's a weekend so this can be like a, a feature you have you can add the holidays so the, the holidays are like uh, will depend on the country of course so 
uh, you can look up the, uh, like the holidays in Nigeria of like this particular time. You can find that already. That is something that you can available. You can like uh, um, just get this data and add it to your um, to your to your data. You can add. You can look up the weather information like rain, uh, how much rain was there, or was it raining or not. You can add all of these features to your data. So th these are things that you can like collect from like public domain. This are information that is available. You can just just collect it. You have to look up like uh, a, a source, but I think um, you'll find resources for this. Maybe everyone who like uh, found something, you can share it like on on Slack so that you help each other. Um, so this is like simple thing you can do. Other things that you can do in um, is that you can manipulate the features that you have already. So like, um, I don't know, you have locations, maybe I'm just giving an example. I'm not even sure that like, uh, if this applies exactly or not, but there are things like you can compute distances, you can compute, I don't know, uh, maybe you can compute the speed um, from the data you have already and create new features. The thing is that because in the next steps, you are going to do learning. So you're going to be using machine learning and you want to see like uh, create features that maybe you will find some relationships with or like maybe it will be influencing your target so so i, I don't know if i answered the question let me know did it does answer the question are you like uh, or is it um... yes yes uh, that it. it's more cl clarification for you yeah hey, it's that's good thank you okay great uh, so yeah, I would suggest that anyone who like uh, get some find some kind of data that is available and think it's useful, you can find the resource. Maybe you can share it on Slack and help each other because like um, I don't know. Uh, okay, Hilary. Yeah, good morning. So good morning. Uh, I, I I I did. Uh, yeah, we had a discussion yesterday. It's uh, some of the tra uh, my favorite trainings and um discussing about the unfulfilled orders and requests so uh, the challenge was w w w about the orders we in the driver's location during request you have accepted and rejected and what, i mean what he came up with is that the and the orders are the the like every row in that in that file is a request so whether it's accepted or rejected it's a request but if it's the same order, it's just request for the same order like um, that was sent and some of them were rejected, but only one request later was accepted. So the confusion was the unfulfilled. So we decided that uh, the rejected was unfulfilled. And also the going forward, I tried the APIs for weather and holidays. So first of all, you can, uh, for me, my what I try to do is Perform feature extraction, get the day, the this, the the day of the week, uh, and you know dates and year from the dates, and, and uh, use the API for for those. Yeah, um, I don't have any blocker. So, um, okay, my blocker so far is trying to get the charts, uh, to to display like the visualization for for the the weather or uh, or. I'm still trying to run them, so I'm getting several errors here, but okay. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. That's great. Yeah, I saw I saw the discussion on Slack. So that was like, um, yeah, so it was, was a good discussion. So I think uh, it makes like the, um, the criteria we came up with is makes sense, like from the data as uh, um, maybe someone was, I saw someone asking in the chat box here that if the data is real, the data is real. That's why it is not, um, it, it has some, like it's not as, uh, maybe it's not as rich as we, we would want it to be uh, because that it is real, that's the point. Yeah, so it's great that you like, um, as, um, so yeah, so you have, you don't have a particular question, but yeah. Uh, so we can move on to someone else. Thank you, Hilary, for sharing. Um, Ms. Gin, do you have another question? Or is this from before? Okay. 
So, any other questions? Um, um, okay, what's all the questions on the chat box as answered before? Okay, so if there are no more questions, I think we can end this session, no? Abdurrahman, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, I I want to to have uh, this relation or connection between the two tables, but uh, I can't find it. So you can't anyhow, find it. Uh, okay, how I can connect those uh, two tables for for this project? Okay. Uh, can uh, one of your colleagues, uh, colleagues, maybe answer this question? Have you, have any of you like connected the two tables? Yeah, Bez, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm also struggling, but uh, I saw that the, there is a latitude and longitude on the second one, the, that, the one that shows the rejected and the accepted one. And on the, on the first one that shows the trick, there is also latitude and longitude for accepted location and the rejected location. So the only thing I can see is the the, lat, the latitude. Uh, but I, on the second one, I'm not sure if uh, the latitude and the longitude is showing uh, the position of the driver uh, where he rejected or accepted it. Uh, but I, I think we can somehow correlate based on the location. I'm, I'm not answering uh, the question, but I'm just... Uh, so this is your idea on how to do this, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, this is a good hint. Okay, so uh, this is an important question, I think. Uh, someone else, Hillary? <coughs> so, so there was a long discussion about this, but um, I'll mention something. Uh, with, the, with the margin, if you want to combine, I, uh, I don't think you can really combine because if you combine them, it won't make sense. First of all, they don't have the same draw length. And if you use order ID, uh, the completed orders have only one ID because they are completed. And the other one is you can have multiple orders, other IDs, but for different drivers request. And Jabez, to answer Jabez, uh, on the second file, it is actually the CSV file is named drivers during location request. So, the latitude longitude is the location that the driver was when they were accepting or rejecting. And then when you go to completed, so the one who accepted, um, like the implication is that the one who accepted the order, the request is the, is the one who will complete the order. And that will, the trip start time and that time will be like where, where he started to, but not where he accepted or rejected. And then, Again, on margin, if you try to merge, you, 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 the columns, let's say for one specific order, the completed order, we are saying the trip start time and end time is the, for the driver accepted. And if you go for the rejected for same order, they'll be null. And uh, I don't think it's a good idea to have null values on another table. It's better stay, stay the way they are. Or, yeah. Because if you merge them, they, the trip start time will also be for the rejected and we cannot say the one who rejected made the trip even yeah. so yeah so there is a suggestion that you don't actually join the tables like the tables are two different um are represented two different things and they shouldn't be um like um so the id uh, this is my question i'm asking you actually uh, for you who have been looking at the data um the, so the trip id in the first table and the um, uh, order id in the second table they are not the same are you saying that like you cannot find like they are not the same kind of id can i answer um, yes the, the trip id for the completed uh is yeah it's the same as the, the order id mm -hmm. uh, implying it's the same as order id in the drivers during request uh file 
so it's only one because it's one trip it's, it's only one order so it's only the the order that was completed so you can't have I, 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 there's no duplicates but there are duplicates for the same order id in the drivers billing location request and the thing is that if you merge them you'll have you'll have like for the same order id in the driver's location you'll, in, you'll also include the trip origin destination start time and end time and this means for the trip the trip like the driver was sending the parcel it's his trip that he was from where he started sending the parcel and where he ended but if you merge them those values will also be copied to the others who rejected the same order so it won't make sense if you have the same trip origin because it, it, the ones who rejected didn't even start the trip but yeah the yeah but is, you can you can also merge in the other direction right you can just merge uh say you start from the trip uh so what is the call of this first data it's um what's one second so you have um like you have the table of completed orders and then you have a, a table on like uh, the drivers right so you can basically start from the one of the completed orders and uh, like join to the left with the with the, the second table so you're not you're not going to be lock access or so have the same thing um of course um, what i'm saying forget what i'm saying uh, the thing is that uh, yeah you're right so you have like a lot of um, copied data for like because they have I don't know what, like what is the goal? Like, let me go back to Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman, what is your goal from like uh, merging the two data? What are you trying to to make to achieve? What okay. are you trying to uh, say to see? For example, uh, I want to know uh, how it take, for example, to to drive a specific uh, order or how how it take the order to to be to be the, the the duration between trip start time and trip end time for a specific order uh, i want to see uh this is this uh feature for for example for the accepted orders so i can i can know uh if all the orders in the trip tables are completed mm -hmm. uh okay um so yeah so i don't have a definite answer to for this like how can you tell which um orders are are fulfilled and which ones are not fulfilled i don't have really i think we have to come with some kind of criteria and apply it ourselves <laughs> some some way i don't i don't i'm not sure if i'm saying something that makes sense um but to to just uh can you can you uh, repeat again abrahman like what is your final goal maybe i misunderstood okay i I was have uh, many goals, but I think uh, my mind is uh, confused now, and I lost. <laughs> yes. Okay, I I will uh, I will continue in Slack asking good question. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Yeah. So, uh, like, just to add to what Al Rahman said, I'm also like uh, having a bit of trouble of like I don't think the data is not completely clear like on all its aspects. So we have to come with some criteria to define like what is unfulfilled and what is fulfilled um uh jobs if i'm not missing something um i'm just looking at the data myself right now so that's why like uh so like uh, basically i'm in some kind of uh, i understand this state of confusion because i'm, I'm also in it johannes do you have something that maybe you can have a better answer go ahead so uh my question was different but uh let me add on the drama question we mm -hmm. uh, i think we can take two ways uh either we only match the from the uh, order data 
we can merge only the completed data with a completed table or we don't need to merge it at all because we can just uh, get the information about the completed uh, order by just calling the id yeah so, yes, so we can just yeah we don't have to merge all of the data we can just take the completed order from the uh, the entire data and merge it with the other one all right okay yeah that's that's the thing that we can be can be considered yes um thank you johannes uh Javis, so, yeah you can continue sorry Maybe Jarvis, if your question is based on this, uh, my question is a little different. Uh, my question is on uh, the data. Okay. And okay, yeah, go ahead. like you are saying that, yeah, the data you are saying the data is real, but it doesn't seem like it. Uh, I calculated the distance and the duration from the uh, the information we had and. Uh, like the, some of the data doesn't even make sense. Like the they say uh, was at the speed of 600 kilometer per hour, 300 kilometer per hour. Like it's mm -hmm. not just a couple of data. Most of the, uh, like there are uh, there are data around uh, 7,000, 7,000. Uh, yeah, 7,000 data have speed of more than 100 km per hour which is not realistic ah, okay. and uh, uh, i was thinking i thought i thought the data was synthetic but how can like if uh, if we consider the effect as well the speed should be lowered since uh, there is traffic the time will be higher so even taking uh if we consider even 60 if the car drove in 60 km per hour which Probably he will not. There are data who have uh, more than 25,000 uh, 25, data who have a speed of more than 60 km per hour. And it doesn't make sense. Okay. Uh, so that's that's interesting. I I I didn't uh, know that. All right. So there are two options or there are two things that you can consider here. That either like if you, you have to first check that your calculation is correct. Like uh, you are not um, like are you using the latitude and longitude correctly to so, to calculate this distance, and if you are doing that and if everything is correct and um, regarding the time, uh, if you end up with like uh, yeah so my understanding that the the data is real but um, and like uh, if this was like uh, happening. So say say if you check that you are actually your calculation is completely correct you double check it and you still have this and the problem is not only one or two or a few records so it's not just a mistake um it might be like um yeah let me just uh, instead of answering this question maybe we can um let me get back to you on this let me ask um i will ask you about all of this and or we can ask him on Slack. Maybe you can ask him on Slack and, and just like mention him so that like he can answer this better than I do. Um, okay. Because like, uh, yeah, again, if it was a mistake, if it was like happening on a few records, you might say like, this is these records are, mis are a mistake and you remove them. But if it's happening for a lot of them, there is like a, a major issue or like, um, I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, so let me just. Um, I will. I will. I will leave that for Yabes to answer. Uh, Yabes. Yabes. Sorry. Yes. Uh, to continue from Johannes, yeah, I also calculated the speed and also the got the same result. They are. Okay. Uh, there is a speed that uh, is unrealistic. Uh, okay. Like six hundred kilometers per hour, uh, something like that, and so. Uh, I think yeah, I don't know. So is it yeah. like the average speed, not just uh, not not something instantaneous or? Uh, yeah, I cal I calculated the distance based on the latitude and the longitude. So there is a starting latitude and longitude, and also the there is a destination latitude and longitude, and there is a time. Uh, so there is a function. And the time 
Okay, and yeah, the time is time. the time is in what units? Are you like are you sure of the units you're using? Like because that will make a big difference. There is a, a date and also a start time mm -hmm. uh, for both uh, starting and ending. What what are the units for the time? Do you what are like the the precision you have? Do you have like minutes? Do you have a time stamp or what is it? A time stamp like there is a hour also minute and also second okay. and also a date. I see. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so uh, that means the time. Uh, so the, is the distance? Are we understanding the distance correctly here? I um, I uh, researched and got uh, there is a Harvard sign which uh, used to calculate a distance uh, using uh, latitude and longitude. So based on that, uh, I tried to calculate the distance uh, between two points. And we, are, we have time, so uh, we will have speed. So uh, are you like using the trip origin and trip destination from the trip the table? Is this yes. one the one you're using? OK. Yes. Um, right. It actually is not, it's not supposed to be, I don't know, it's not supposed to be the trip itself is, forget about the speed, the trip, the distance is for the trip, shouldn't be huge to begin with, they are not supposed to be huge, um, so maybe the problem is with the distance, they are not supposed, because it, these are deliveries within the city, so it, it's, also, it's not supposed to be like, uh, I don't know, it's not supposed to be a, a big, a big distance, uh, I mean, in kilometers, but like not hundreds of kilometers, definitely. Um, yeah, Johannes. Yes, I agree. Like the problem, uh, maybe <clears throat> maybe from the latitude and the longitude we are given. Yeah, maybe there are problem with the precision. Because if the precision is uh, is like because these numbers are big and they're supposed to be precise, and if they are not, if there is a small. Um, issue with uh, like uh, with just yes, the final number then you are going to be to be getting a, a big difference in the distance so let's uh, let me get back to you on that on the data or um i don't know i just don't want to like let me i i will i will ask but you also i want you also to write this down in a slack and mention mention us like mention yababal not nile and and me so that we can have the discussion on slack okay um because this is like uh, i don't know how we should like have some kind of way to proceed with the data uh but for now let's say uh just to proceed before this is uh, as before this is resolved or like um, come with some kind of way to deal with it consider like uh, forget about the inconsistency for a second since it's happening over all the data and proceed, just proceed with what you think, think that is everything that makes sense and continue. So that you, pro, like, I want you to um, develop your uh, your process, the, what you are going to do, despite if there is a problem with the data or not. Just like uh, for now, this is what I'm going to say. And if there is nothing like a final, a final question, we can, I think we can. Um, maybe one question. Yeah, go ahead. Concerning the outliers, so Abu Bakr is also uh, saying something on the chat. Uh, I have difficulty to deal with the outliers. I'm I don't uh, know how uh, how really de deal with it. For example, if uh, for uh, example to reject a latitude and longitude, we can maybe uh, take a centroid uh, distance, the mean distance, and uh, reject the others, but. It's very hard because uh, 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 some drivers may take a longer distance uh, from the other one. It, it, they, they may get that uh, uh, that request. So I'm having a hard time on how to really deal with the outliers. Yeah, so again, this I think uh, will be just a tangent or like part of the your question by Johannes. Uh, so basically, like um, for now, uh, I will just advise you to proceed without like considering outliers, without looking at the like, without looking at the inconsistency in this uh, distance data, and 
um, proceed and yes, we, we will try to resolve this with, um, with, the, with the rest of the technical team, okay? Um, yeah, so I'm sorry that I don't have like a, a resolution for you just right now. So uh, with that, uh, let's end this session um, and we'll continue for the discussions on Slack and we'll, okay, all the best for, uh, for your submissions later. Right, I'll stop the recording and...